Garage Vlogs. Hello, welcome to JCR Garage Vlogs, and on this video, well, I have decorated, I have gotten my computer hooked up to the TV, and there is more on the Trident Juncture military exercise that's happening around here. In the last Volvo video, you would have seen this clip. A Chinook and another helicopter hovering over here and making a lot of noise. Now the way they've said it is of course that the military is not gonna be in anyone's way. It's not gonna well delay you too much or it's not gonna be a hassle for you to like deal with it. But <laughs> that has proven to be a problem because today uh, my girlfriend was supposed to go down to Hamad and then to Oslo tomorrow to uh, an appointment, and she, you know, she left here about maybe two. This is a tops three hour drive on the first leg, of course, down to Homer. And then she left here. I was still inside, and I decided, about, well, I'm gonna go outside and get the snow off the Granada because that has a flat tire, and I have to get down to the garage and fill it back up. So of course I go out and I hook the compressor up, fire the engine on so it's just, you know, charging. And then I suddenly hear a honk while I'm brushing the snow off. And then she's back. Reason is, a couple of kilometers down the road, a British army truck, with snow chains no less, has managed to slide off the road. This is of course Norway, we drive on the right side of the road. And he's managed to slide off into the ditch on the right side with the back end of the truck when the front's still up on the asphalt. And okay enough, we had a really big snowfall tonight, well, until today and probably during the day, um, where we got about 10 centimeters of snow. And somehow they managed to slide off the road with that truck. But I know, of course, that a lot of Ritz aren't really familiar with snow and don't really know how to drive on it. But up here in this part of Norway, that happens at this time. I mean, it's late October, it's the 30th today, actually, and... Well, there is snow here at that point, and I mean... <sighs> the British military is, well, forgiven on my part that they didn't know. The problem is the Norwegian military didn't tell them. Because, I mean, of course down in Oslo and stuff there's not that much snow, but up here it's a lot. And, well, when she came back we discussed a little bit of what to do and decided, well, you have to drive north then and do a big loop round that's gonna add at least, you know, an hour, at least, to the trip. But, then we were figuring that out, and it took a while for us to think through that and try to find the best way, but we then decided to go down there, both of us, and have a look and see if they've cleared out. And when we got there, there was a lot less activity on our side of the block, but got there and talked to one of the um, MPs that were there, uh, and she said that we're going to have to turn around, because that truck is blocking, they have a big tow truck to pull it back out, but even that's struggling. They have wires and cables running everywhere to try to pull that thing back on the road. And they had some excavators and a few other things there to, like, that probably should be able to pull it up, but it was just too heavy and none of the excavators had chains. And of course these had big rubber tires. And they didn't have chains. They had absolutely no grip whatsoever wherever they put it. So they got a big truck to pull it out, but, well, they expected it to be a couple of more hours, and at that point that truck had been in the ditch for six hours. So, they haven't really thought that through. And I mean, you should really send a memo, at least, to the participating countries that it's gonna be a lot of snow, you better bring your best tires and chains, and put them on before you go. Because we have, in a lot of earlier videos on my other channel, I have told a lot of times that it is a half an hour drive to the nearest, well, town for us. It is 30 kilometers. And 
Of course, we have proper studded tires. We are familiar with this territory. We know how the roads are around here and we know where to be careful. And of course the Brits don't know that because they've never been there before. So we've been going there a couple of times. With our speed, usually it's around the speed limit, which is 80, and we usually stay well in this particular, <clears throat> well in this particular weather and road conditions. We usually stay around 60, 70, maybe 80 if the road's good enough. And well, we caught up to a couple of Land Rovers, and they were doing 20, 30, tops 40 sometimes. Kilometers, which was, well, needless to say, I was <clears throat> pretty well annoyed laying behind them for all that time because it pretty much well it over doubles their travel time to the store and then to get back. Well, oh, well, luckily there weren't any Land Rovers going the other way when we get back, but it is still an inconvenience, and I shouldn't be bitching that much about it because it's only happening now, but it is still. Annoying, because, you know, they're in the way of different stuff that people has to, have to participate in or have to show up to. And on the other side of the mountain here, there is a set of turns that is commonly known as the throat, because it goes, well, coming from the south, it goes up, turns hard left, hard right again, and then almost 90 degrees left and in the middle of that turn in the hardest it's almost a 180 degree turn there is a danish tank in the ditch because they didn't make the turn now of course the danes don't really have that much snow and again it's not their fault for not knowing the conditions but they should be more careful when the conditions are well obviously snowy you can see it yourself but this, um, but that is enough of my rant, and um, the exercise itself, Trident Juncture 2018, has three main parts. There's a deployment phase going from August to October, which is obviously over now, a field exercise from October 25th until November 7th, which is happening right now, and at last there's a command play, command and at last there is a command center exercise from the 14th to 23rd of November. Equipment, military material is transported from the different nations and until and to 27 different places in Norway. The material and the person the material and the personnel is transported to Norway with about 180 plane transports, six naval transports and from the various deployment from the various deployment places the gear is then shipped to the exercise areas with trains and trucks they are going to establish and build about 50 camps in <clears throat> this exercise Half of the camps will house over 500 people, and the biggest, about 5,500 people. <coughs> now, funny thing about the camps. I was sitting on the couch earlier, I was editing the video for... Well, actually, before that, when I went outside the door to film that last video, the Volvo video, that is the Cold Star video, the Volvo, it's probably up by now. <clears throat> it When I went out, there was a Land Rover sitting in the intersection just down here that I could see just from walking out the door. I could see a couple of Land Rover headlights over the Volvo and I was like, what is that? Because I know one person, well two people around here that has Land Rovers. One is us, but ours is stationary because it's winter and it doesn't have proper tires or heater or anything and it doesn't want to start on the starter anymore. The other one has a blown engine, that is a 2014 Land Rover. So it was like a Land Rover. Could be the army, but what are they doing in here? And then it turned and went down. And then I saw the two aerials poking out the front wings, and I was like, okay, that's the army. What are they doing here now? 
went back inside and I edited that video. Lo and behold, a lot of cars started running by outside. So I go outside onto the porch and I look and I see taillights of a truck and I see taillights of a Land Rover. Then suddenly in through the forest because there's a field just over there. I see headlights turning around like that. So they are setting up a camp just outside my front door. Which is funny. I'm kind of tempted to sneak over there during the night and make bear noises. But I shouldn't do that. <clears throat> but that is just a little tick in me that wants to do that. But, um... That is probably it for Trident Juncture. Uh, of course, if you want to read something more about this, then you just Google it. It's Trident Juncture 2018. I don't know if they have it in any other languages than Norwegian, but, you know... Um... Hmm... <laughs> uh, I'm just scrolling through Google after searching Trident Juncture. And... <laughs> people have really been wanting to get some footage of this because... There is, of course, a... Uh, there's kind of an air blockade where you are not allowed to fly over certain areas. And, <laughs> well, on two air, on two airports, they have observed drones that's been flying around and, well, almost preventing the um, army's helicopters from taking off. And they are going to fine violators with up to 20,000 kroners in a ticket and taking their equipment. <clears throat> Which is, um, well, it's a hefty fine, but I'm guessing what you get for interfering with, <laughs> interfering with the military. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a very long video, and I'm thinking I'm going to end it there. If I am stupid enough to go outside and <clears throat> see if I can play a joke on the military, you'll see it here. Oh, yes, you'll see it here. Not the other channel. Uh, so you can um, subscribe down below and see if that happens. Also, if you want that to happen, hit the like button. And we'll see what happens. But that is it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, take care.